Next question. I feel tired in the afternoon and feel like I can't work out because I just want to take a nap. So there's a lot here again. Guys, this is why we can't just give information to very individual specific situations because there's so many questions that we come back with. Like number one is likely that the blood sugar is a little unstable. So come the 3 to 4 p.m. time frame, if we haven't been eating consistently throughout the day, if we've had like higher carb meals, if our body's not tolerating carbs great in that phase of life due to some level of insulin resistance, if blood sugar is getting out of range a lot. This happens a lot with like inconsistent meals. You see very, you know, big highs and lows in blood sugar because people go too long without eating. And then when they do eat, the body kind of sh- shoots blood sugar up much higher than it normally would if it's getting consistent intake in. So if you're crashing in the afternoon, I would look at what your meals look like in the morning and lunchtime. And then also we would start evaluating sleep. Like mm-hmm. how well are you sleeping? How much sleep are you getting? Are you getting sunlight throughout the day? Are you getting any type of movement throughout the day? Some walks, stuff like that. You guys, Liz and I both take pretty good care of our bodies. If I don't move at all throughout the day, I get pretty tired come like 3 p.m. You mm-hmm. got to get up and move during your day, even if it's a short 10 minute walk. Speaking of, we're doing that. After we're doing podcast. that after this. I always use the term like, or the phrase energy creates energy. This is so often seen if you get into a place where like you're not working out consistently and then you find it harder and harder to get going. I want to work out. I'm just so tired. Just start moving just start moving. If you're tired in the afternoon and that's your limiter, get in the gym, just start something. Because you guys, I'm tired most mornings at 5 a.m. when I wake up to go and work out. But once I start moving, once I get going, my energy comes to me because I am creating energy through the movement. So sometimes it's literally just like you got to suck it up, buttercup, and get yourself going. And then you will start to feel the better energy. Yeah. And I think you always have to remember that your body can only do as good as what you give it. Mm -hmm. So if you are eating sporadically and consistently, you're eating high carbs. So let's say you're starting the day with coffee and a bagel and there's no protein present, right? And then you're maybe skipping lunch or eating on the fly and you've got a sandwich, very little protein, again, little fiber, high carb, high sugar, right? You're probably riding that blood sugar Mm -hmm. roller coaster that we always talk about. And so you have to just think about this is a routine that you've created, right? This is a habit that you've created. And so even just like if somebody wants to get up earlier in the morning, you have to work to create that routine, right? You have to change your sleep schedule. You have to change your time that you wake up and be consistent with that. And then eventually your body responds. I would say the same thing here after work is you've probably just you know trained your body to be tired at this time because of all of the other factors that Becca just mentioned between sleep, lack of sunlight, lack of movement, mm-hmm. inadequate protein, poor quality of food, things like that. Again, we don't know all of the answers here because we don't know this person and their health history and what all of these things that we're talking about looks like. But just remember that you've got to get out of this routine essentially. So you might just need to start with forcing yourself to go for a 10 to 20 minute walk after work when you want to lay down. And I Mm -hmm. think you'd be surprised how good you can feel again, once you got that fresh air, once you got moving. So last thing we're going to talk about today, what do you do after you over consume or have a binge episode? Because this is something that especially around the holidays right now, I ate 10 cookies today, or I drank way too much on Saturday night at a holiday party or whatever it is. I think that the first thing realize that was a moment in time and move on from it. Mm -hmm. Like it, the only reason that it becomes a bigger issue is if you make it a bigger issue. If you dwell on it, if you say, screw it, I might as well just wait until January 1st, which is 16 days away. Like we, we end up turning it into a much bigger issue than it maybe could have been. Get right back to what you normally do. Get back to drinking water, get back to moving, get back to eating adequate nourishing foods. Don't starve yourself. Try and get right back into a healthy routine. And then you realize that it really probably wasn't that big of a deal in the first place. And you got to sometimes put some rules in place. I 100% agree. You need to know how much you're accumulating, as we talked about on Monday in the accumulation effect podcast, right? If it's three cookies here, four cookies here, three Mm -hmm. cookies here, right? Maybe they're small cookies and it doesn't seem like a lot, whatever. Over the course of the month, 
These things add up. And so let it be that moment in time instead of trying to punish yourself the next day and work it off or starve yourself because you need to cut the calories from the following day. Just get back to your normal routine. Drink a little bit more water. Walk a little bit more. Do your normal workout. Maybe push some more veggies. I like to do more veggies and lean protein and I'll pull my carbs down if I've had an indulgent weekend or I just had a meal out or we were on vacation, things like that. But I'm not trying to punish myself by cutting my calories or going to the gym and doing an extra workout. What's done is done. The thing that needs to be done is that you need to unravel why I didn't stop at my commitment of having maybe two in a setting, whatever that moderation limit looks like for you. Why did I continue to go to three, four, five, six, eight, ten cookies in a setting and start to do some of the mindset work? Because Mm -hmm. We know that is the biggest piece to making this change long term. And so if you overconsumed or you binged or whatever the situation was, you stress ate, let it go. The more that you dwell on it, you're probably going to do it again because you're mm-hmm. thinking about it. Yep. And like I said, maybe you're thinking like, what's the point? I might as well just wait till January 1st or Christmas is next week. So let's just enjoy the week. You're just going to put yourself down. Like you're basically digging a deeper hole. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. I, I think that people don't realize you guys, every little choice makes a difference. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to put too much weight on that, but it's true. Every choice you make from now until the end of the year is impacting where you start the new year at. And so the choice to say, screw it, I'm just going to not meal prep this week and I'll eat out more, or I'm just going to have one cookie every day for the rest of the year or more than that, or I'm just going to enjoy myself. And then you increase your calories unknowingly by on average, like a few hundred a day, if not more, yes, that adds up that (laughs) that adds up and puts us in a not great place. And so ask yourself, like, why do you feel the need to do that? And I'm not saying that to be like a Grinch and say you shouldn't enjoy the holidays or something like that. But how enjoyable is it if you wake up bloated? And we talked about on our Slay the Holidays group call this week. Take a trip down memory lane. Like a perfect example. You know that bender that you went on and you swore off alcohol for the rest of your life the next morning. And then two weeks later, you forgot that you swore off alcohol and you did it again. Try to remember how awful you feel when you overconsume these things. Have too much sugar. Have too much alcohol. Have, have too much of these things. It's like we just forget. We, like bl- we black it out of our memory. That's something that's helped me immensely with moving on in my journeys of not binging anymore is remembering very vividly how I feel the next morning, the multiple days usually after I have have a binge or have too much alcohol. And for me, I just finally decided it's not worth it. It's just not worth it to me. And I had to keep that, unfortunately, scarring memory close in mind because that's what helped me make those changes. If we just live in this oblivious, oh, maybe it won't happen this time, or oh, I'm just going to forget how awful I feel, or oh, it's worth it. I justify it, whatever. You're probably never going to change. You have to learn from these situations. We have to learn from our quote unquote mistakes or overconsumption periods. And if you really do feel awful, ask yourself, do I want to do this again? Write it down too. make, take a sheet of paper and make a list on the left. How do you feel when you do these things? Like you don't feel so great, right? Write all those things out. My sleep gets interrupted. My digestion is thrown off. I'm moody. I feel bloated. I feel puffy. My joints ache. I don't recover from my workouts. Maybe I don't lift as strong in my workouts or hell, I skip the gym the next day because I feel so bad, right? Mm -hmm. Make a list of all of the cons. And then on the right side, make a list of all the pros and remind yourself how good you feel when you're not doing these things and keep that at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Because I agree with you. Sometimes we just get so wrapped up in the emotions and in the moment that we do just forget or block those things out of our mind. And then we find ourselves the next Monday morning, feeling like crap again. And so I just had this conversation with one of our clients today. She's, I just was doing some reflecting on my journey and I can't even tell you how different this has been and how amazing I feel. Like I don't even want these things that I did in the past. I don't feel restricted. So therefore I don't really want them. Whereas in the past, when she felt restricted, she felt like she was missing out, Mm -hmm. right? That fear of missing out. It's definitely a syndrome and it's very real for a lot of people. But when you can think about it differently and you can make these choices for you because you have them, these choices are in alignment with your values and you have a different mindset and you have a different belief system now, then it's easier for you to continue feeling good. And if you have a slip up here and there, which you will, everybody does. As Becca has said before, and we've talked about it with other guests on our podcast, like just because you didn't completely overconsume and binge the way that you used to, maybe you did overindulge a little bit. You are reminded now of 
how great you don't feel. It wasn't as extreme. It wasn't as frequent, but it will happen. Eventually, it's going to happen where you have a day or a time, whatever the situation is that you feel like you just overdid it a little bit and your body will remind you of how great you don't feel when you do those things. And so write that list out. And then I would even take it a step further if this keeps happening write out what the event was that this or the the situation, right? What was triggering you? Was it a place? Was it a person? Was it a day of the week, a time of the day? We've talked about this before with witching hour, right? Then start to dissect that reverse engineer. What can I do to stop this cycle from happening again? Can I put new habits in place of going and meeting my friends at the bar for happy hour at the end of a long week. Maybe I can change that and go get a pedicure or a manicure or do something else that isn't putting you in that position to be tempted by these triggers. Mm -hmm. Lots of things that you can do, but at the end of the day, pick right back up. Just move forward. Hey guys, it's Liz. Beck and I really value your time. And as you've noticed, we don't run ads on the show so that we can deliver you the most amount of amazing content in the shortest time possible. Please do me a huge favor and just scroll down, leave us a quick review. This helps us grow and spread the message and we'll love you forever.